Hi everyone, thanks for coming to my channel. It's been ages since I last posted a video. Had a lot of things happening last year, 2019. Building a house, moving into a house, finishing off the working year. Just lots of crazy busy things. But here we are, and today's video, I thought that I would go through a few things that I would have liked to have known when I got Olive. I've had Olive now for two and a half years, and there are a few things that I've learned along the way that I thought I'd pass on to you. Plus, I thought I might do a, a bit of a combined greyhound information video along with a plant tour and a house tour all in one package. So I'm gonna take you from room to room as I give you some tips uh, that I've learned along the way about owning a greyhound. <music> So to sum us off, we're in what will be eventually the study. It's not, the whole house isn't fully furnished yet, but um, anyway, this is the study. One of my favorite things in the study are my Greyhound bookends. There's one here and there's one on another shelf as well. So tip number one, if I could tell myself something that I needed to know before I got Olive two and a half years ago, first thing I would say to myself is get a crate. Uh, Olive sleeps in a crate. I put her in there every night. She knows that's where she sleeps. She sometimes puts herself to bed in there during the day. She feels quite comfortable with it. I usually put a blanket or something over the top of it just to make it feel a little bit like a den. And she often retreats there on her own. I don't have to force her in there. Having a crate has a few benefits. If you've got other animals, and when we first got Olive, and we still do have a, a cat, a very old cat, so to protect him and you know of any mishaps, because I wasn't sure how she was going react or how the cat would react with her in the house. To protect them both, uh, we decided to crate her at night times. Most dogs, uh, greyhounds included, prefer not to soil their bedding and greyhounds also have been kenneled during their racing career so that's the benefit of uh, getting a greyhound at home. They've already had that toilet training, they know not to soil their beds and they wait until, mostly, mostly they wait until they're taken outside to toilet and that works for us. Uh, we don't have any toileting problems uh, with Olive unless she's got some sort of upset tummy and there's been a couple of accidents but that's it, over two and a half years a couple of accidents. Uh, during the day she has full access to the whole house. Uh, she's very much an inside dog, but um, yeah, just at night we crate her up. Walking now towards the balcony, beautiful sea breeze. I live about five or 600 metres from the ocean in Perth, in a Hampton style sort of home. I've got the balcony doors open at the moment. Tip number two, pet insurance. Uh, this is some of my plant collection. Before we go on, that's a little bit of my plant collection. Uh, and this is sort of like a secondary TV room. I've snuck my plants into the house one by one. My husband, when we first moved, got so tired of moving 70 something pot plants that he was adamant that I was not gonna have them all in the house, but I kind of have. I've snuck them in one by one. Are we sneaky? Are we sneaky? Oh, smoochy girl. Sorry, I got a bit distracted with my plants there. So, pet insurance. I highly recommend getting some kind of pet insurance. There's a lot of them out there, but do your research. Greyhounds tend to be a little bit accident prone. They can get injured with the slightest bump or scrape or even playing with other dogs or playing on their own in the backyard. They can get a little scuff and before you know it, they are bleeding and needing stitches or uh, needing claws removed, that kind of thing. Olive one day was lying down in my living room. She caught her dew claw on the table and I had to have that pulled out. It wasn't very nice. But pen insurance covered that. Another time, Olive uh, was down at the beach and got attacked by a dog. In fact, it was, I wouldn't even call it an attack. It was just a flash of aggression from another dog and it lunged at her. Its teeth just caught her on her shoulder and she got a massive, massive rip from her shoulder blade all the way down her side, uh, $1,000 at the vets. In that case, the other owner paid for the full cost of it, but if that had not happened, I'm very glad that I had pet insurance that would have been covered. So I would definitely get pet insurance for accident and emergency. Oh, she's giving me, this is, this is a greyhound hug. The forehead, oh. Yeah, a little miss. Little Miss Smoochie here wasn't always the smoochiest hound. It took probably, I would say, a couple of years before she would actually come seeking out a cuddle from us, but now she's quite snuggly and cuddly. So don't be worried if your greyhound's a little bit aloof. They often like their own space. Which brings me to my next tip. 
and that is if your greyhound is lying down and resting leave them alone there's a thing called sleep startle which i didn't know about um, until it actually happened and that is pretty common with greyhounds and i'm not sure why they do it exactly maybe someone out there watching knows oh you're going to go to sleep on it um but basically what happens is if they are asleep and often they can look like they're awake when they're asleep their eyes are sometimes open doing creepy zombie kind of faces but sometimes they are asleep and if they are touched or nudged or you breathe on them or you walk past them, sometimes, oh, you just did a nose drip on my leg, I'll leave. yuck. Sometimes brushing against them, waking them up can result in sleep startle, which can be quite frightening. The first couple of times that Olive did it, and she didn't do it a lot, but she did it a few times. It, she sounded like a rabid wolf basically um, killing a rabbit <laughs> or something. It's like a reflex action and they can't help it. They do grow out of it, I think. Olive certainly has grown of it. Olive, come here, your ear is inside out. Come here, come here, let me fix your ear. There we go, good girl. They grow out of it. Olive doesn't do it anymore. I got her used to the idea of being touched when she was asleep by just allowing her to be sleep, sleeping next to me on the floor in the TV room or something and I would just continue to stroke her and cuddle her as she dropped off to sleep. So just to kind of get her used to being touched. But if you've got young children or other animals, please teach them to leave the greyhound alone when it's having a sleep. They need their own space. That's where, again, where a crate comes in handy because then they can go in their crate, they can have their own space. No one's gonna accidentally touch them. And if they do frighten them, they're not going to get hurt if the greyhound is in their crate so another good reason to have a crate so sleep startle would be my next tip be ready for it and leave your greyhound alone when they are sleeping sorry that's a really long tip but hopefully you know what i mean come here come here olive olive come come on olive come olive come oh, come on come on quick quick as you can see little miss stubborn over there has not moved in spite of me calling and calling her so tip number three be very very careful where you let your greyhound run and play don't let them off lead only take them somewhere where there is an enclosed fenced space uh, especially while you're getting to know your greyhound's personality and behavior and prey drive definitely not at a dog park uh, I would avoid those to start with uh, some greyhounds are a little bit reactive when you first bring them home to other dogs. Some of them are great. Olive is fantastic. She loves other dogs. She loves other people. Not all greyhounds are, are like that. Some of them are quite reactive to other dogs, uh, particularly small dogs, and some are not. Some are fine. Greyhounds are not the most obedient dogs, I have to say. If you're torn between getting a cat or a dog, then a greyhound is a good choice. In fact, I often say that Olive is about as obedient as the cat, so not very. She will come to me when I call her if she wants to, and if she doesn't want to, then she won't. So if you are outside somewhere and they are off lead or they get away from you, if they see something that they want to chase, if they have a strong prey drive, um, you can call them and they may not come back and that can end up in disaster. Straight onto a road in front of traffic, um, it, I don't even want to think about it. Just be careful. And yes, this is my bedroom. Just a quick tour. There are some more of my plants. More balcony space over here. A little chandelier. I love that chandelier. And look at my plants. Look at my variegated monstera while we're here, I have to say. Eight leaves now. When I first got it, I bought it with two leaves on it. Now it's got eight and another one is starting to come up. Anyway, enough about plants. Let's keep going. I'm going to take you to a room that people don't often take people to look at and that is my bathroom I really love my bathroom so quick tour in here let's have a look around in fact maybe I should turn you around wait a minute oh maybe you can show everyone the bathroom let's show everyone the bathroom yeah so look behind me are some nice towels and pretty mirrors Thanks for showing us the bathroom, Mom. More plants. And a 
Greyhound. She's switched off at the moment. I've put her into power saving mode. Greyhound, activate. Wake up. What you doing? Open sesame. Oh, that seemed to work. You're funny, girl. Show her how you go down the stairs. Good girl. Some greyhounds struggle with stairs. So if you have stairs, be patient with your greyhound. Give them time to um, get used to the stairs because it might take them a little while to, um, to get used to navigating stairs. Should we go in the kitchen? Should we go in the kitchen and show everyone the kitchen? Shall we? Should we go in the kitchen? You like the kitchen, don't you? Because there's food in there. Oh, 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 is there some food? Is there some food in the kitchen? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Looking at that looks already. Okay, well, here's my dining room behind me, speaking of eating. Um, I love my dining room, actually. If I do say so myself, I really am loving this room. Beautiful jute rug and um, a lovely timber table and timber legs. I love it. Timber chairs. Those are timber legs. They do have timber legs, but that's not what I meant. With a built-in sideboard, that is a great idea, you know. I, I wanted that in this house. You can put your things that you're serving on the sideboard. Uh, get them off the table, out of the way. Kitchen. Oh, living room. <laughs> I get distracted. It's just been Christmas. You can see I've still got my Christmas tree and my little Christmas tree in training. I like to call that one. That's a real one and that's a fake one. Uh, we need some more furniture in there. As you can see, it's not completely furnished yet, but we're getting there. My next thing I wanted to tell you about, apart from showing you my kitchen, let's see kitchen and if I walk backwards I can show you the scullery here we go this is my scullery where I can keep all my appliances out of the way back out to the kitchen and looking at Olive looking at me saying mum what are you doing are you a crazy lady sorry Olive you you know I'm a crazy lady all right so next tip connected to the one before about not touching your greyhound when it's sleeping something that I find really really useful and that is to have a cafe mat. I say cafe mat because I tell Olive that it's a cafe mat but it's actually a bath mat. I got the biggest bath mat that I could find at a home shop and I have two of them one in the car sometimes one in the wash and I take it everywhere with me I just roll it up when I'm going to a cafe roll it up stick it under my arm get to the cafe I roll it out like a red carpet and she lies on her mat it's a fantastic way of keeping her in her own little space she knows that that's where she's supposed to be she plonks herself down there she sits quietly on her mat and she doesn't bother anyone. I was terrified that people were gonna step on her because taking your greyhound anywhere like a cafe, sometimes the space is not too big. Um, it's a little bit try like trying to park a, a small pony in a confined space and then have people not trip on it or step on it. So a cafe mat is a great way of giving her her definite space to lie in. And I think it makes her a little bit more visible to people as well. So they're a little bit less likely to step or trip on her as they go past. If other dogs approach or people, or children especially, if they approach when Olive is on her mat and she's having a little nap, I always, always wake her up and make her stand up before anyone approaches her. If kids say, can I come and pat your greyhound? I say, of course she loves pats, because she does, and she loves children, she loves all people, she loves men, especially with beards, uh, she loves dogs of all kinds, but I always make sure that she's standing up so that she doesn't feel threatened, or that her space is being encroached upon, or that she doesn't have sleep startle. So I always make her stand up, and then people can pat her, and she loves it. She is just in heaven when people come and make a fuss of her she could just do that all day long down there we have well first of all we have some more plants but we have uh, Olive on her bed on her inside bed now one thing I haven't done yet is get a number of beds for her here are some more plants too look at all my plants 
beds. You're going to need more than one bed. If you've got an upstairs and downstairs house like I have, two story house, you're going to have to get another bed. I need to get a bed for her for upstairs. She spends most of her time coming upstairs with me, wandering around looking for something to make a bed on. A couple of times she's jumped onto my bed, which is a lot higher than the bed we used to have. Uh, and it's white. What was I thinking? But anyway, she's not allowed on there anymore, but she tries to get up sometimes, so she needs a bed, a nice comfy bed, and that's the kind of bed that she likes to lie on, the one that she's got down there. So I'm going to have to get another one for her to have as her upstairs bed. She might also get another bed for the balcony, and then she can have a balcony bed. She is spoiled rotten. Yeah. I've given up trying to number my tips. I've lost track of what tip number I'm up to. Sorry, the light is going crazy bright because I'm trying to focus on Olive here. What was my next tip going to be? <gasps> Clothes. You are going to need to buy a wardrobe for them. And when I say wardrobe, I mean you're going to need a collection of coats. Uh, depending on where you live, you will need some clothing items for your greyhound. So. If you're interested in the sorts of things that Olive wears, I have got a separate video that I filmed uh, earlier this year called When to Dress Your Greyhound. Sorry about the flaring. If it gets to 15 degrees or lower, then you will probably need to put something on your greyhound. They do feel the cold very easily because they don't have a lot of body fat, hardly any, and they can't regulate their temperature either with heat or with cold. So in the cold weather, you're gonna need to put a jacket of some sort on. Um, have a look at my video, when to dress your greyhound, if you want some more details on that. And in the heat, you will need to uh, find ways to keep them cool. Some of them like to have a paddling pool. Some of them like to lounge under the air conditioning all day long. Some of them like to go for a swim at the beach. And some of them just like to lie flat out on the ground, on the, on the tiles in your house, if you have tiles or something like that. So be prepared to spend money on a houndy wardrobe. Another tip, if you get together with other greyhounds for a play, which can be lovely. <laughs> the only dog that they know is a greyhound. And so when they see greyhounds, I know when Olive sees greyhounds, she goes bananas for them. Um, and so it is lovely for them to get together with greyhounds for a play or a walk or something. If you are going to take them somewhere where they can run around off lead, an enclosed um, safe space where you're allowed to do that, uh, it's a really good idea to take muzzles. And I know that muzzles are horrible and Olive hates hers. I rarely put it on her because she passed the green collar test, which means she doesn't need to wear one. But if they, even if they have passed a test and they don't need to wear a muzzle, it's still a good idea to have them wear them if they are playing with a group of greyhounds because sometimes they can get a bit excited, they can get a bit nippy and accidents can happen. Okay, my final tip would be to learn a little bit about dog body language. This could really save your greyhound from danger at times. The time that Olive got attacked, I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs in the other dog. The signals that you can see in a dog's ears, the way they carry their tail, the way they hold their head uh, when they're approaching your dog. Quite often when Olive meets new dogs for the first time and she loves dogs, I had to teach her that you can't just go barreling up to a dog nose first and just barge into its space a few times she got growled at. I've taught her to look forward to meeting other dogs. When I see other dogs, in fact, she knows what the word dogs and look, there's a doggy, she knows what that means. I point out dogs to her as we're on our walks. I sort of speak to her encouragingly so that she sort of gets a positive vibe about, oh, there's a dog coming along. And quite often before the dog gets to her, I will spin her 
around so that her tail is facing the dog so that she gives off the vibe that she's a little bit submissive and friendly. It sets up a good greeting with the other dogs and I always make sure it ends on a positive note so that she has good experiences when she's meeting dogs. That would be my advice to you. Learn to anticipate what other dogs' intentions are and also what your dog's intentions are. Well, thanks for watching and thank you for putting up with my uh, house tour, plant tour and uh, greyhound tips for new greyhound owners. If you're thinking about getting a greyhound or you're about to get one or you're not sure if you might like a greyhound, I highly recommend them. They are fantastic dogs. We've just loved every moment with Olive and I hope we have many more years with her. Best dog I've ever had. You won't regret it. But just a few things that I think might be helpful for you to know before you get one and I hope this video has helped you.